All right. At the risk of cursing it, my internet's been really good for the past like week or so. so oh, you fucking right. idiot, Mitchell! You done yeah, cursed it. I, I, I do. <laughs> now, here's your hosts: the League Dad, Kevin, Mitchell, and Alistair. What's up, gamers, and welcome to another episode of the All In Podcast. I am the League Dad, and joined by the Goon Squad. We're making it official. That is our name, the Goon Squad. We've got Kevin, Mitchell, and Alistair, and uh, just always glad to, to talk with you guys. League, always exciting, especially this week with playoffs. A, a bunch of games. I mean, going down on the wire. I'm a little sad because my team, unfortunately, didn't go through. Kevin, I know you're probably feeling it as well, but hey, man, there's a lot of stuff going on in the league and so that makes me happy right like there, there's excitement in there these playoffs have been amazing i'm glad they weren't just like stomps all the way through so if anything as a spectator i'm excited about that but uh before we dive into the action uh let's get an update with you guys how are y'all doing uh kevin how how's uh sf i know you were complaining about the heat there it's hot in north carolina too i just had a soccer game earlier and i almost died but <laughs> how are you doing and how's the heat over there it went to 98 today i don't Oof. have ac it wasn't oh, great. God. My cat was just laying there, like, very sad. And so I, like, poured, not poured, but, like, I got cold water on a towel and, like, cooled her off. And she didn't even, like, respond. She's like, oh, okay, that's fine. <laughs> that feels good. <laughs> so we're good now. It's, like, 80. We'll, we'll live. It was a great week of LCS, though. I had such a good time watching it. Even yeah. if, like, the result wasn't what I wanted. I mean, I this was one of the best weeks of just viewing experience. Even if the games weren't great quality-wise. I, I've I have since just believed that league is just about the entertainment factor. Like I watch LC cams like what are you guys doing? <laughs> it's, it's just funny sometimes. So Right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like I said, you know, I'm in that same boat with you. Like, even though it didn't turn out as I wanted, uh, I was salty for about a day. And then after that, I realized that it was a really good uh, playoffs just in general. And so I'm glad to see that. But glad you survive in the heat. Mitchell, how are you? How's Seattle? Is it a little cooler up there or is it still hot too over there? Uh, it, it is cooler. It's like mm, high 70s, low 80s now. Oh, man, that's of, nice. Like, yeah, I was I was getting the 90s for like a while, like 90, like close to 100 sometime. Like, dude, this is Seattle. What's, what's going on here, <laughs> right? guys? Uh, did I move to the wrong place? Um, <laughs> yeah, otherwise, I'm, I mean, I'm doing good. I just literally just sat at home, watched all the playoff games, watched the double of coast stream. I was actually with Alistair most of the time. Nice. Uh, watching on uh, through Discord. And it was crazy. It was all a blur, man. It happened so fast. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, Alistair, how are you doing? Uh, getting all adjusted into school and whatnot? Yeah, I'm getting pretty well stuck in. Feeling feeling good about school. Uh, games this weekend were all over the place. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. Def Let's just jump in because, <laughs> yeah, I feel yeah. like there's just so much. Like we're all, we're like just holding back all the stuff that we want to talk about. I mean. <laughs> If you guys have watched the LCS, you obviously know the results and everything, uh, you know, EG eliminating TL, unfortunately, making them the third contender for Worlds um, is pretty insane. And even just the road to get to that final series on, on Sunday was was pretty amazing. But, um, you know, kind of that that win was quickly overshadowed, I feel like, by uh, the announcement on Reddit uh, from Danny saying that he was stepping down. Uh, from the starting roster and you know people did notice and I even noticed when they won that game five uh, you know everybody on EG was celebrating and, and going crazy and Danny just kind of looked I don't know he he had no emotion on his face like it was a little odd I think even the cast some of the casters noticed it but it says he's stepping down uh, for mental health uh, issues um, but what do you guys think about that because we have been talking about some speculation about there's something a mist there internally. It seems like they've been playing really weird. Definitely seems like they're not in sync. So what are your thoughts on the, on that news saying that he's stepping down? I mean, I, w I wouldn't even say no emotion. He was crying dude at the end of the day one and he was crying and he, throughout the series, even in the TSM one, two days beforehand, he just always looks super sad and depressed. Like he just looked like I'm playing like crap and I feel like crap as a result. And I think, if you've ever been competitive in anything, you'll understand, like, if you're underperforming what you know you can do, you're just going to feel awful. And I think that's how Danny has been feeling. The internal strife, if I had to speculate, is also probably just likely because Danny's just not playing well enough to play around. And that was, like, the team's MO. Like, that's what they were doing, right, for so long. Um, the meta can get there. They could just force picks, like, the Senna that's been working for them and the Jinx. And they can get there, right? But I totally get where Danny's coming from. He's young. He's very... Like, 
he's very momentum driven, it feels like. And so if he's getting all this flame on, he should just get rid of social media, dude. There's no point. Yeah. You should not be engaging, especially not at your age. And there are a lot of people who are supporting him, so that's good. I hope he comes back for Worlds. I think this step down is only for playoffs because it doesn't matter that much. Like, they've already won Spring Split. They don't care, right? So um, I hope he comes back. If he doesn't come back for Worlds, we're in trouble. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think I think he's definitely doing the right thing, and I respect him a lot for doing it. And, I mean, he, he hasn't been playing well, and he knows that. But I also think part of what's been... I, I think the inspired interview really hit him hard yep. i think that's real i think that was a main reason because it kind of like it, it really exposed him i feel like because i mean no a lot of people didn't really realize that like his champ pool isn't that good like i didn't even think about it until inspired like said it and even though he didn't single out danny i mean it's pretty clear who he's talking about right mm -hmm. everyone else kind of plays the meta champs except danny and it, it was warping draft a lot and even then, I, I just think Daniel just had like mental block. It just felt like felt like crap. And I I definitely think he's doing the right thing. I I expect he'll be back for Worlds. I don't think they'll have the sub for Worlds. Um, I think he's just going to take the next month or two off. Um, just practice, fix up champ pool, or you know what, do what he needs to do. But he's doing the right thing. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, it's it's rough to see, but also it kind of sets a nice precedent because I think that at least in league and in gamer society, we can kind of sometimes make fun of or look down on mental health struggles, and right like other players, another team, another org, if they step down for a similar reason. If we look back at TL with Ole, he stepped down from MSI group stage, um, and he got a lot of flame for it, and Doublelift admitted himself that he like completely chewed out Olay, and there was a tinge of regret because it was in the moment and probably double if regrets doing that to Olay, and everybody kind of shit on him for it in the threads and his career has never been the same right Olay hasn't really made a comeback since so i thought a lot about that and related it to this and it's nice to see the positive reaction but you know that was Olay's thing was four years ago so I, it's nice to see the community is more accepting um, I just hope that in the future, if someone else does this, right, and it's not a superstar player like Danny, right, literally in the announcement, he's called the Prince of Pentakills, like, he got maybe the best treatment for having a terrible playoffs performance, stepping down, and most of the comments are really positive. Most of the comments are at the most of like, yeah, you're playing like shit, you should probably stop playing, right, like, for now. Um, I, I hope that we can continue on this road, because... Honestly, mentality is just such a big deal. Not just in gaming, not just in pro, just in life and everyday situations, right? We, we can learn so much from it. So, yeah, it's there's just, you know, I, I feel bad for him. I hope he can get back to it. I think, this is, I think this is also a theme that's been kind of, I wouldn't say causing controversy, but it is a talking point in a lot of sports. Like we've seen tennis, and like if I'm not sure if you are aware of Naomi Osaka, but she, she was this really great tennis player who... Took some time off. Like, I think it was a big competition. I can't remember, but, you know, she was expected to play because she's so good. She sat out for mental health reasons and people were like up in arms, kind of like, are you kidding me? Like, this is the biggest tournament and you're sitting out of it. And, uh, you know, even in the NBA, we're starting to see, you know, players sitting out for mental health reasons. And um, I do agree that I think it's great that organizations are recognizing recognizing this. Um uh, and I'm trying to say this in the most like non-offensive way possible on the flip side, though, as a professional, as your job, like, cause I can equate everybody in all sports go through streaks of crappiness. It is not uh just league. Um, and I would even say that I, yes, I know league is toxic and that's kind of a known uh, thing, but there's toxicity in all sports. Right. And, and it can be pretty bad and pretty vitriol, uh, with the fans hating on on players who aren't performing well. So on one hand, I totally, totally get it, right? On another hand, it makes me also go back to the time when Danny was getting flamed for not playing Champions Q. And, uh, you know, it makes me come back to the idea of if your champ pool is small and you, you weren't playing Champions Q because you needed to just, you know, cool off, like 
kind of part of me wants to go back there and say, you know, this is where I think champs queue may have come in handy. Like if, if you grind it a little bit more as far as like, you know, I won't just play whatever I want in solo queue, but I'll actually try champs that, you know, are outside of my pool in a competitive environment. Again, I'm trying to say this in the most, because I totally get, I, I, uh, you know, suffer from mental health issues. I take, uh, you know, medication for it. I'm very open about it. And I think more people should be because it's it's not a stigma. It's real. So I, I definitely empathize with them. But as a sports professional, esports, man, that's a hard one because sometimes, look, your people are invested in EG. You've got sponsors, everything that are relying on on your organization to perform, whether or not it's Worlds, you're in playoffs. And this is kind of where, you know, you getting paid big dollars is supposed to come into play because you're a professional athlete or e-athlete in this case. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I agree with you. I think when we're at this juncture, like it makes sense, right? You you should take care of yourself now that all the cards are on the table and everything played out this way, he should be taking care of yourself 100%. Right. And I also agree that like that world can exist in the same world where if you had prepared yourself, had done the prep and champs queue, had really expanded your champ pool, like, yes, it's good to prevent burnout and cool down and everything, but you still got to put in the hours, right? You've got the talent. He's clearly extremely good on the characters he's good on, right? His Tristana, his Jinx, his Zeri were all very good. And sometimes his Ezreal, like, he's very good. But you you are inviting, like, that stress upon yourself to some extent if you don't put the time in. If he has put the time in, though, and we just didn't see it and like he just couldn't get it to work you know that's fine but from yeah. the outside looking in right i totally see where you're coming from where like some of that is preventable and then some mm -hmm. of it you know like if it if it still comes out this way like totally take that break you you yeah. earned it right all that yeah. being said yeah yeah at the end of the day he did step out after they made worlds so i mean that's because it's clearly he's been struggling all the playoffs i actually remember it was in their last game of regular season I was when Inspired was on Vi and totally 1v9 in the game, right? Mm -hmm. um, Danny actually played a pretty bad Sivir game, but he was kind of invisible because uh, overshadowed by Inspired. And he just put his hands in his head after the game. They won. Uh, they beat Cloud9. And you could tell that Danny has already been tilted since back then. Um, I will say I get two points to follow up, really. I The best players in the world would be able to handle this kind of pressure and keep trekking forward and maybe even use it as motivation to play better. So that is a real right. thing. Like that's mm -hmm. like also like I'm trying to be nice and say it, but yeah, I got to say it, it's real. Mm -hmm. It's like mental health struggles are another factor and it's another variable that every pro player has to deal with. True. It's not new to Danny. And yeah, it's good that he needs to deal with it and he took the time to step away after they qualified for Worlds. But I don't know, a, a really, really great player who has all that stuff on lock and key, right? They just keep going. Um, so he's got a lot to grow. He's he's a new player. He's, yep. you know, this is what his second year or one and a half years, I think. Mm -hmm. He's only played yep. three splits now. So um, very clearly, right, this is, uh, this is a area of improvement for him where the mental stuff is always going to be there. If you ever want to be a pro player, that's just how the life is, right? It's yeah. going to be really toxic. It's going to be difficult, as you're saying. Um, and the, and the, the next point I wanted to make is just how much influence does a mental player's, like, state really affect their gameplay? And I think right. that at the highest level, it's, like, the most important factor, actually. I think that, right, champion pool that we're all complaining about Danny, I bet you that he can play Callista. It's just that his team doesn't think it's good enough, and maybe he doesn't think it's quite good enough, right? He could play Callista probably better than 99% of the world. <laughs> yeah, I, It's I just like, yeah. you know, his team doesn't think it's the right fit for him. So they ban it on blue side and red side, right? So it's like the confidence, you know, from Inspired in that interview is very clearly that there were some confidence issues that led from his teammates that also spread to Danny. And he took it really hard. And, you know, we, we brought it, I brought this up on a previous podcast and we talked about it a bit where like, you know how Asian teams, they go to Worlds and they share strats and scrim results with each other and stuff like that? Like that, at the highest level, is going to make more difference than another scrim block or another Champions Q game or whatever, right? Same thing with mentality, right? Being confident going into a game, having the faith in your teammates, like being happy and in a good mood, it's going to matter infinitely, infinitely more at the highest level than having another 20 games of scrims or another 20 games of Champs Q or another hour or two of VOD review, right? So um, I do think that we're at the point where it's like really min-maxing all these slim margins. And 
Danny taking a mental health break is like, hey, I gotta, you know, if I want to show up at Worlds, I gotta do this because all that other stuff is not gonna amount to much. I'm, I already know I'm a great player. I just need yeah. my mental there. So. Yeah, I 100% agree with the whole mental aspect. You know, I, I watch a lot of sports shows like behind the scenes stuff and you know with coaches that are coaching professionals like I'd, there is strategy but it seems like every pre-game you know conversation has to do with mentality like coming yeah. in there focused coming there together you know playing with energy all of this stuff just to get you prepared mentally for the game because you're right at this level these guys are so good that uh you know they can get the reps in and yeah it will help but uh i i do agree that that aspect the men- mental aspect has to be there and if you're not there then you know good for him and especially strategic if they are look if we want to be prepared for worlds and we think this is the best step maybe he's taking a break and maybe he starts grinding those champs now maybe i don't know maybe he's like you know what let me just get into a room just get some account that nobody knows and just start spamming these champions and and see how how good i can get i hope that's the case like i said i hope he takes this as motivation and moves forward because them being our world's representative, I want our best EG there, even though yeah. they beat my team Liquid. And I wholeheartedly believe Danny, even bad off Danny, is still the ADC that I want on that team because they he was our MSI representative. He deserves to yeah. be there. So um, let, let's look at the field too, right? Like EG is very clearly the worst out of 100 Thieves and C9. Like mm-hmm. I think a lot of us can agree they look significantly worse than those two teams. So you gotta, you're gonna be in play ins. Yeah. And there's a chance you can't get out of plans because there's five major region teams. Right. So I do think, right, like if you keep Danny in, you're probably still staying third. If you keep Danny out, you're probably still staying third. If you're going yeah. into play ins. That's what you got to prepare for. Right. right. So Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So good move. Again, hoping hoping that's the case that he comes back for, for Worlds. But uh, let's flip to the team that they beat. Unfortunately, um, they mm. beat my team Liquid. I was very, very sad. Kevin, I, I'm sure you were hurting a little bit. Discord got really quiet. I I didn't look at it for a while. I was pretty upset. But, um, you know, this team frustrates me. Team Liquid has been frustrating me this whole time. I really do feel like uh, it just seemed like they they went all in on the Enchanter meta, which arguably is the correct move. But it really just pains me to not see... Uh, core jj on engage because i i still think even though some of the some of his engage champs didn't seem to fit with their comps like i do think that him being on there him being the go button is their best chance of winning and i just think they tried too many different things and just couldn't come up with an answer they pulled out some wins just by you know sheer skill i guess uh but what do you what are you and this is fitting to start with you kevin but what do you think moving forward um you know is this a roster that should stay together and can build. I mean, they're they're all veterans, but we didn't see them get better at all, really, this whole you know year. So, do they make moves now, or do we do the hundred thieves and let's let's try it again? Do the salty run back and and hopefully we figure something out. So, what what are your thoughts on that? I think regardless of the wills of the players involved or Steve or whoever, like they just cannot afford to do it again, right? Fourth place with the how much it costs, like with all the memes about seven million dollar or whatever the actual value was. It's just not tenable, right? We're not going to have Worlds twice in NA. We didn't have any results, both splits, right? We got third in and we got fourth. That's just not good enough for that cost. So they let's just like X that out. And now what do we do from there? Um, in my opinion, there are three pieces that you have to keep, right? Um, in my opinion, Core JJ being a native, like he had a bad split. Okay. I, I don't care. It's Core JJ. He will provide so much in terms of ability to build a roster as well as just like being on the roster. And I think Santorin played like one of the best playoffs of a jungler period. Like he just was a monster. He got first blood in like five games in a row, four games in a row, whatever in multiple series. Dude, Team Liquid has the second highest win rate of any team in playoffs right now. They're 53%. And the only team higher than that is C9 at 69 or something like that. Nice. Hey, hey. everyone else is 50 <laughs> or under, right? So like you guys it, are immature. Okay. We're just kidding. Hey, you, said that, you said it. You said hey. I know I laughed too. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an abject failure but it's just they weren't enough right this group wasn't enough i want bjergsen to stay in personally but i think that the three pieces the third piece is not bjergsen i think the third piece is whippo whippo play like 14 characters this season and like the amount of flexibility he provides your job like yeah they weren't all good but people in top lane play like 14 plus characters we had summit playing like four okay mm-hmm. we had alfari playing like three like i'm <laughs> This is what Liquid was looking for. Even if the rest of the roster didn't gel, like it's hard to look good on a roster like this if you're just dysfunctional, right? Um, I want Bjergsen to say, 
and I I kind of need Hans Thomas to like have a chance to like come back because he was so good in spring and we saw bits of that when he's playing Jinx. But I don't think after that performance, especially he's probably being paid a lot. Like I don't think he's being kept on. Yeah. So I think Hans Thomas is the most likely to be removed, and then Whip was probably a little bit more likely to be removed just because of Bjergsen's star power and his brand value. But Bjergsen's play wise, even though I don't think he was bad, I think he was top three or two during the season. He just might not justify the cost. The problem mm -hmm. is who's the replacement, right? So that's kind of what I want to pass off to the others here. Mm -hmm. Like, if we drop any of those players, who the heck do we get? <laughs> yeah, good question. I mean, for me personally, I just going off of history, I don't think Bjergsen, I think Bjergsen's going to retire again. Um, we, we've seen this multiple times where someone retires, they decide, you know what, I want to compete again. They compete, it doesn't go as well as they'd hoped, and they retire. We just saw it with Double Lift. We've seen it so many times in the UFC. Like every every sport does this. Tom Brady, maybe I think he he just retired and then came back, right? Yeah, he's back so again. I, yeah. I, I don't I don't I don't re I don't really follow football, but like if it doesn't go as well as he as he hopes, he probably just retires again, right? Like right. It, it, this happens all the time. So I'm guessing that Bjergsen probably retires again. Um, as for Whippo, I don't know. I I hope he stays. But I would expect Hans Sam and Bjergsen are probably going to be uh, retiring, or Hans Sam might go back to Europe. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, for replacements, I think the best move is to. I mean, NA has a bunch of like decent AD carries, so I think you can probably find a native AD carry, or you import an AD carry for Core JJ, and then you try to pick up Palafox. That would be. I think Palafox is the only native mid laner worth going for, and I don't think there's any native top laners worth going for. Mm. So, yeah, um, those are all interesting. I'm not really sure. I honestly think um, I, there's a difference between what TL will do and what I want TL to <laughs> yeah. do. I think what TL will do is honestly they're going to buy an import that we're just not going to expect, and it's really hard to predict because I don't know what the contract database is like right now. I don't know who's up, who's free, who's willing to leave and stuff like that so honestly i think that we're gonna probably they're probably gonna blow up a good chunk of the roster keep santorin and core jj and buy imports everywhere else what i want them to do honestly is i do think you keep whippo because there's just no good top laners in na so <laughs> you keep the ones you can find right uh that are willing to come i think you definitely keep santorin core jj yeah you probably keep two and then the rest yeah find someone native i honestly think you find a, the next Berserker. You literally find some random no-name and be like, hey, we obviously buying top-tier talent year after year doesn't work. Their results have slowly gotten worse and worse, right? Since Double have left, it's just been a string of second and third places. And this is their first, first fourth place. Should they get rid of that... Smithy? Yeah, don't get rid of <laughs> Smithy. Yeah. I mean, like this... I, I think you just you just gotta find some new talent, someone who's promising, who is hungry, and most importantly, right? I really like how Flycast went for the Philip angle. They said he wasn't the best player mechanically or in any or champ pool wise. He fit well with the team, like play style wise and personality wise. We're seeing that at the highest level. This stuff matters so much more. We just saw vitality, right? Very clearly, a bunch of talented players did not mesh well personality wise or gameplay wise or something, right? Self-made was gone, even though he was their best player. Um, so yeah, I think that's what TL should do. Find two no names in mid and ADC that have a lot of potential that are willing to learn and just sit down and be like, yes, Mr. Whippo. Yes, Mr. <laughs> yeah. Jail, do whatever the hell you say. And just, you know, play from there, develop. Maybe have a, a slow spring split and push for summer. Um, so that, that's what I think should happen, yeah. I think they'll do a TL. This is kind of a weird take, but they might do a TL move and just kick Santorin. And oh just my pick gosh. Up, pick up someone they do else. That? Like speaker They're or boosted. something. Super I mean, boosted. but they did that. They they did it when Jensen had a great world, right? Like, yeah, his regular season wasn't good, but when it mattered, he had a great world, right? He almost got him out of groups. And they did that with X like Smithy. They've done it time and time again. They've kicked a player that's done pretty damn well on their team. Um, like, Double if got kicked too when he was doing pretty damn well. And so, double if wouldn't. So okay, well that's different. that's actually fair. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's it's not unusual if if Santorin gets kicked for some reason because they think Spika is going to be the superstar in the future, the younger, you know, hungrier player who wants out of. He's already out of TSM, right? Like, 
it's possible honestly if steve is the type if he sees that opportunity he will go for it and honestly i don't know if i would even blame him i think santorin's amazing but will he be amazing for four more years i hope but it's hard to say right I uh, yeah I I I gotta I have to I would hate a move like that I think for Spica I think that move is just a side grade at best right um, I think if you get someone like Tarzan right Tarzan has been trying to go to Worlds for years and years in China do that right yeah. go for Tarzan that I would be okay with that but like if you're doing anything that's like remotely close to a side grade I think Steve's trolling I like this year was not Steve's fault okay if he if he he literally was like yo VCs, give me a shit ton of money. I'm gonna make you a world, a world's contending roster. He did his best, you know. He got kind of unlucky. But if he does some silly side grade like Santorin for Spica, I think he's strolling. I'm gonna blame him <laughs> next. Year I mean, th it. this roster 100% should have gone to Worlds. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> There's I look no at it right world. now. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. even <laughs> looking at it still, you you look at the roster and think, how is this team not going to Worlds? Right? You have Worlds finalist, two or sorry, one World Champion, and you have Bjergsen, obviously, who's like makes the Worlds almost every time he plays. You have Han Sama, who made it to Worlds semifinals, and you have Santorin, who I don't, I, he's made it to Worlds a couple times. Like th this is a team that should go. And I guess they just can't play this meta. I, I was they can't play yeah. with each other. Yeah, meta, I, that too. I was gonna say uh, a little bit of copium, even though they're they're out, so there's not really any more copium. But I do think the meta was not their meta. Uh, you know, even Whippo, like some of the counter picks, carry counter picks that would have been nice, like uh, into the Aatrox, especially specifically, uh, like how we saw Fudge be able to handle that, right, with some Fiora or Camille against Orn or whatever. We saw. Whipple, although playing, you know, had a wide champion pool, sometimes his counters weren't there or he couldn't play the ideal counters and, and that sort of thing. Uh, again, we mentioned the core JJ thing, no engage really. And I think core JJ for his team, I think he needs that that go button where the other part where you just mentioned it, uh, Mitchell, was that like, I don't know if they can play together. That's That's my worry is that like, I honestly think in, in the beginning of the year, I thought this was going to be a great chemistry, like because I'd figured these are all League of Legends veterans and nerds. They all love the game. But I what I've noticed is I think they might all have different philosophies of how to play. And they all are very insistent on how they want to play. And I don't think that's going to mesh well. I thought maybe because they're all veterans, they would be like, OK, We'll go. We'll just we'll go with that way, you know. Uh, you know, I thought they would just all basically bow down a core and say, "Hey, yeah. yeah, you take us." But I think you know, seeing some of the the videos in their their YouTube series, you know, where they have conflicting ideas of of going in and Bjergsen always wanting to play kind of this control style way, and him not being able to pull out things like a Kali or or Galio, like these different types of of champs. Like I think maybe they can't play well together and you guys mentioned a lot of good things one i i actually disagree with you alistair i think because bjergsen was so close to worlds i think he will want to compete again i think he he was right there um if they were like a, a sixth or seventh place team then yeah i think he'd be done but i think the fact that they were that close i don't think he wants to go anywhere honestly that's my opinion we'll have to see uh but i think that guy wants to compete and it's kind of funny because you know tl did Jensen wrong and Jensen makes worlds and TL doesn't. Yeah. Also, Steve is trolling because he tweeted out D uh, DL check your DMs. You know what I mean? He tweeted <laughs> double up, and it, which is kind of uh, messed up. I hope I was telling Kevin, toxic. I hope that's toxic, man. I hope he <laughs> talked to Han Sama before he tweeted that out and was like, "Hey, bro, I'm just kidding. Like, I'm tweeting this out, whatever." But yeah, you don't want to like, man. That don't throw whatever, him under man. the bus like that. It's that's whatever. So yeah, it's uh, it's <laughs> so, so crazy, man. But uh, you know, I I don't know what this team does. Honestly, I if even if it's not feasible, I. I still have hope for this team. I want them to come back, actually. I feel like, you know, give them time if they had the money. Like, maybe Steve could convince people like, hey, man, it was just not our year. Like, give us one more try. Um, I honestly think if you do the salty run back, I think they could get their stuff together. That's my my humble opinion. I, I don't think it's going to happen, but I would love to see this roster stick together and hopefully try one more time because I just think it's too good to just, you know, say, say, Bye bye. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I do think like that the with the play together sort of idea. When you look at their past rosters, actually, like maybe with besides sort of Bjergsen in the past, but not really as much. None of these players were ever like the centerpieces of their former teams, right? Mm -hmm. 
Whipple was never the main focus of the team. It was always always reckless, um, and or humanoid or no. When who's their mid laner? Um, when they went to uh, Worlds last year, Nemesis? I can't remember. No, no it wasn't was Nemesis. Last year was humanoid. Last year was humanoid also. Maybe whoever there, whatever it was, right? Whenever Bubba's on a team, he's never the main point. He's never the main focus of his team. Santorin also never been the main focus of his team. Always on supportive junglers. Bjergsen, honestly, it's been a while since he's been the main carry when he was on TSM. He was mm -hmm. always playing very supportive type playstyles and champions. Well, like. voluntarily though, to be fair. True, voluntarily. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Voluntary, involuntary. Mm -hmm. Rogue's Rogue Hansama on Rogue was always kind of secondary to Larson. These guys were never like the main carries of their team actually if you look back at hansama's career he's kind of always been like pretty subtle on rogue when he was on rogue for a lot of years he was very subtle it was always the main story was larson and inspired and um i don't know i think that that's interesting it's something i actually just thought about like literally just now <laughs> and that's but <laughs> and see that's why it. it that's why i really thought it would work because i feel like core jj is the leader is the one that can you know, be centered around, you know, he could be the center voice of that team. And I figured because everyone has been kind of like side roles uh, or supporting roles, that would event that would work essentially. Right. So nobody would be kind of the the main focus trying to butt heads with them. But I, I think like out of game, that kind of makes sense. But when mm -hmm. you go in game, true, right, yeah. like Hansama on Jinx doesn't make sense. Right. You want instead Larson on Azir. Like that's your main person. But it's Bjergsen and he can't play his ear very well right now so that I, yeah it's it did feel like honestly this team like ah, yeah I don't know man I, I hate to rag on Bjergsen I, I mean I would give him another year right this guy right. was retired for a year he came back he didn't have a great year he had an okay year right but like this team just needed honestly Jensen they just needed a hard carry in the mid lane I think if whoever was the if they just had a hard carry in mid lane who just played scaling dps threats that could kill people and you play around them this team makes a lot of sense everybody can support that idea uh on the other sides and then yeah obviously the meta was very adc focused as well right so it, yeah. it just yeah hansama did not fit i feel like yeah it's yeah just the big problem with that it's just yeah wasn't as okay well. All right, well, let's move on a little bit because uh, two other teams that make it through that didn't make it through, TSM, CLG. We already talked about, you hinted at it, uh, Kevin, but for those who haven't seen the news on Reddit, Spika is a free agent. Uh, so it said that when I read it that TSM terminated his contract. Uh, that seems, uh, I don't know exactly why, how that's the case because why would they want to terminate Spika? Um, mm. But either way, he's, he's, he's in the free agent market. So where do you think he's going to go and where do you think he should go? So the issue with speakers, uh, so quickly, TSM Dominic or whatever, one of their like uh -huh. general manager people said that essentially like they just couldn't come to financial terms. So probably okay. speaker just like put a huge number in the sky yeah. and is like, okay, if you don't give me something like this, there's no way I'm staying, right? And like obviously <laughs> TSM can't afford it. I mean, crypto's down. FTX is probably not in a great place. Right. Anyways, where do I think he's going to go? It's kind of cursed um, if you really think about it. All the top teams in the league, bar FlyQuest, have a jungler that basically could be a franchise jungler. Yeah. There's Closer for 100 Thieves, Blabber for C9, Santorin for Liquid. Like, Santorin's like the least steady, and he's already played a monster split, right? And so, if you don't replace Jose Diodo, where do you go that's an upgrade? And also, TSM beat Jose Diodo's fly quest. So, is that mm -hmm. even an upgrade? So, for Spika, it's kind of a curse. Like, there's no. Oh, inspired for EG, obviously. Um, the, the MVP. Like, there's nowhere to go yeah. uh, for him that isn't upgrades, which is why I, I gave the crack theory on the Santorin getting removed for Speaker thing. Like, that's such a Steve move to do, where, like, Jensen had a good split too, right? Um, and I I hope he goes somewhere well. Maybe he'll go to EU. I don't know. That'd be uh, crazy. But there's nowhere that's obvious, right? You would have to do a really risky kick. Like, we all think Spika's good, but the fact of the matter is, like, that team was dysfunctional when Spika was the leader. And so, mm -hmm. at the very least, you need someone else who's very strong, very strong opinions that Spika's willing to respect and follow, hmm, Bjergsen, uh, <laughs> and, you know, someone that he could trust to coordinate with, because Spika can't be that leader. Or at least, he hasn't shown the ability to, right? So that actually narrows it down even more because as we were talking about, mental means a lot. Your ability to think about the game, your ability to coordinate, your ability to like not tilt. 
like that means a lot and who knows Spica could just be like the next um Vera was it the super hyper carry jungler on Envy who got MVP on like a ninth place team or all t- at least first team jungler I, he might have been MVP as well of that season and then he just once he like moved on from there he was okay he's still good on clutch but he wasn't like a hyper carry anymore so I don't know <laughs> this is the answer <laughs> that's liquid, the answer liquid yeah. to me is the obvious answer and then FlyQuest is the safe answer okay I, honestly, I, I I'm just as lost. I mean, I think there's a possibility maybe Inspired doesn't stay. Maybe he goes back to EU, and maybe we get Speaker. But like, I it's it, it's so hard to tell. I I think he should have stayed on TSM, but I I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. I I, I actually that that was my thought. Right? Was in, uh, EG has a bad Worlds. Uh, Inspired wants to dip and go. Like Fnatic, honestly, maybe he goes to Fnatic because Razork is like super hit or miss. Like, yeah, he's playing well now, but you know, there's a lot of times where Razork is like, "What are you doing, bro?" So there's a lot of teams, maybe in EU, that Inspired could could uh, could head to, Rogue. right? <laughs> yeah, but maybe back to Rogue, maybe to Mad Lions, right? There's just mm-hmm. a lot of things that you could do. I mean, probably not Mad Lions. Actually, LU had a great split, um, but yeah, I I think it's a tough world for Spica. I think that if I were him, if I can't get on a top team in NA or EU, I maybe you pull a Reckless and you go to a other region and try to make worlds there, like a smaller tier region. Try to make worlds and because I think it's better to be on a top tier in a lower region and make it to worlds than be on a okay team in na and not make it to worlds like i think that i think it hurts your career more more to stay in na and not make worlds that's what a lot of other players have decided as well too a lot of players do spend some time in like some lower minor regions and then make a comeback back i'm pretty sure that's what reckless is doing right now otherwise i mean these you're just there's literally tough decision after tough decision there's no good one for speaker right now so i think you're hoping maybe one of the world's teams completely booms and they ditch their jungler or something yeah yeah i don't know if it could happen but i actually wouldn't mind seeing them on clg i think that would be a pretty Mm. fun team to see them on you know uh you know, contracts is, I don't want to like, no disrespect to him or whatever, but I think it'd be interesting to see instead of him, Spica in there with big dokes and Palafox, you know, in the solo lane, you got Luger and Puma. That'd be an interesting yeah. team for me. I don't know if that's even possible, but that's the one place I I would want to see Spica at is uh, CLG and see how that goes. But uh, NA. Yeah. And that's just going to be interesting for TSM now because who are they going to get? right like this team okay, again <laughs> yeah exactly that's that's the thing like how do they even that. how do they even get relevant anymore like they made a nice yeah. little run here at the end but uh that that might be it if we we already said this like speaker is really the only thing that's keeping people have you know keeping any attention on tsm at the moment just with all the bad press they have um but yeah is there anything on clg you guys wanted to mention they are out again they took uh, Team Liquid at five games, so I was sweating a little bit. Yeah, but, let's, uh, let's talk about both CLG and TSM, like less about yeah. the like outside stuff and just sure. about the games, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that'd yeah, be interesting I'm to go down. through. All right, go ahead. Yeah, I think for CLG's case, like, dude, CLG, sure, they took TL to five games. They also took C9 to five games. They're the only team to take C9 to five mm, games. Yeah, C9 in like pretty much three one dumpstered the other two top teams in our league right now, right? So. As far as I'm concerned, like, they did look like a contender. And, like, with the firepower on their team, that's insane. It's actually insane. I don't think... If they had made that upset over Liquid, I don't think we've ever seen an underdog team on paper just, like, get that far. Like, sure, we had a clutch gaming beat TSM way back when, right? But even that roster had, like, closer on it. Like, it had some really good pieces, right? That just hadn't fully matured yet. Yeah, that team only... It was closer to Monte... FBI Huhi and then somebody top lane that was not someday, right? I don't think that was Clutch Gaming. I think Clutch Gaming, didn't they have, uh, they had Huni, they had, pretty sure they had Lyra, and they had Demonte, and I think they had. Oh, I'm know, thinking Golden really, Guardians is upset. Yeah. Too. Cody Sun. <laughs> I think they had Cody, Cody Sun. Sun. Yeah, 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 they had yeah, Cody yeah, Sun yeah. and Vulcan. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. I guess even that roster still had more talent than this CLG roster yeah. has on paper. Like, it's kind of crazy. That they got this far and i saw i mean I, i'll give them credit they were a real threat and the only reason they weren't treated as one well other than 
going to game five with golden guardians was because there's just not the name power on there. There's just so many like has been people on that team, you know, especially contracts and Doklo who have a bad rep from their mid to early career. So I'm really happy for them. That's great for the org. I kind of wish they made it far for farther than TSM just for the memes, but that yeah. would have made liquid even worse. So unfortunately we can't have everything. Uh, so big respect to them. I will say I don't think this roster has that magic twice. I it's I actually don't think it's possible for them to be this strong twice with the firepower they have. I think they need at least one change, which is like what we were talking about, the jungler, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean I think personally they're not gonna do as well next year. I think they kinda just kinda they they kinda just got lucky with the meta. Because the meta just kind of turned the game, and this isn't just in NA, this is all over the place, where the, the meta just becomes such... It, it, it It's such a fiesta. Like, every game, it just feels so, like, low-quality, skirmishy, just like, and no one's playing well at, at pretty much in any region, it feels like. It, or just like, it. I don't know, the games just, like, don't look as good, and I think CLG was allowed to get away with that, because Contracts does very well on this meta. Uh, next year, I don't think it will stay that way because I think and I hope Enchanters will be nerfed or reworked or something. And I mean, overall, though, I think it was a big win for them. And I think because they did so much better with a roster like this, it shows that they have good support structures and staff so that maybe they can get some like bigger names for or sure, yeah. you know better players to join uh, for next year. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, CLG, I mean, they did a great job. Yeah, they were on the Enchanter meta and the Seraphine meta way ahead of the time. So I do think that in terms of like brain power and thinking, um, they definitely had a leg up and they were on top of things quicker and sooner. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I just had a little hiccup there. Um, <laughs> and then uh, I, th I think that, yeah, they had really great drafts all year long. And then they just, like in their series against Team Liquid, they were... It felt like two games of CLG curb stomping TL, and then three games of TL curb stomping CLG. Like mm. none of the games were that close, um, and TL just reverse swept them. And it felt like, I don't know. I guess CLG when they hit the moment, when they had the 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 you know the the chance right in their hands, right, just one more game, they just they fell through because it really felt like, especially in game five, they had that crazy Yona Kali draft where it's like literally if they get ahead. It's a free dub. They just steamroll them over and over again, right? Zillion, doesn't matter. You just kill them. You can't die. You kill them again, right? Because honestly, Team Liquid's draft had no damage. But if the other thing happens, if Team L gets ahead, you just never kill anybody and you do no damage. So um, they had these very all in drafts, these very like done or one or done sort of strategies. And I think it was really exciting. But yeah, it just felt like their hands fell apart towards the end. Um, and I do think that that's like more of a mental thing. Like I'll say this for the, mm. every single five game series we had was a banger and it was a complete, like Volcom said of himself, very low ELO, <laughs> very low ELO, <laughs> wow. very uh, sus quality. And I think it's just the pressure, right? It's just like on stage, everybody's saying we have to make worlds this year. We put all the money and time into North America worlds. And I had this thought was like, what if we play this exact same best of five, but it was not on stage, no audience at home, and you were just under the premise that everybody was going to play their best? The series quality probably goes up dramatically, but people are flubbing and doing stupid stuff because there's so much outside pressure mm -hmm. coming. And I felt like that's what happened with CLG. They just started playing like crap as soon as game three rolled around. Um so their players just need more experience. Yeah. I, yeah. I actually wouldn't be I wouldn't be sad if they ran back their roster or right. made one change i would actually be down because it did feel like they were on the cusp of something great and it wasn't that like they hit a they hit like too difficult of a t competition it felt like they sh they hit a mental block and it was their own like there it was themselves holding back from greatness yeah so. Yeah, I, you could probably be right about the, especially the mental aspect of things uh, because it does seem like they're a team that was and thrives on being loose. Again, there's a lot of things like in game where you're just like, what the heck are they doing? But I love it. They just stick to their style and they just do it, you know, but it seems like they locked up, uh, you know, kind of like uh, in, in those last three games that they lost against uh, 
FTL, and they're just so, whipping skill shots on yeah. stun targets, it's like yeah. really stupid, silly stuff. Where right. you put them in champs queue, they hit that ten out of That's ten. Right. Put Absolutely. them on stage, they're missing it. So, yeah, it's the know. pressure. It's the pressure yeah. that causes you to, you know, miss those things that you've done hundreds and thousands of reps on, right? Like it should be automatic, yeah. but um, sometimes it just doesn't work out that way. Uh, anything on the other games uh, or other series? So uh, I, I do want to save the Hundred Thieves C9 one for last. Uh, but anything mm-hmm. on the EG TSM or EG versus Team Liquid? Dude, yeah. Ta- yeah. Tactical got robbed. Sorry. Go ahead, Kevin. Go ahead. <laughs> I mean, I, I was about to say the same thing, so we're on the same page. Okay, all right, all right. Guys, <laughs> let, let's, this is this is kind of the elephant in the room. That was a night or eight or seven hour series, and like, what the heck? <laughs> it should have been rescheduled. Like, I am not a TSM fan. You guys know that, right? Yeah. And I, I like EG every day of the damn week. But yeah. what in God's name was that? I, so at the time, I was actually upset at EG. So I apologized to EG because we were in a call together, we were like, or in chat slash call at times, and just like being like, "What the heck is going on?" Mm. And it seems like it was Riot's fault. Like they were saying, like the audio wasn't working. So Riot's like, "You should be pausing right now." And then so yeah. they, they were doing it right. But how is this fair? Like there is a world. Where this is just played as a regular series, no audio issues, no whatever, right? Maybe they're even if they're remote or whatever. And Danny's just tilting, and he does not get two hours to sit there and think about his life's decisions and think about what he should be doing in the next fight, right? Or they're not like getting five minutes or ten minutes at a dragon fight that's deciding the game to decide how to play it out, right? Because they're being pressured by T- TSM. I think TSM should have won that. I mm. I don't like TSM at all, and I think they deserve to win that series if only because they had. The right momentum, the right, like, they just felt like they were more of a team for a lot of that series. And EG were just the better players. And so, like, once they had the time to really reset and think about it, they could win. And this sounds a little copium, sounds like a little bit of, like, me trying to be a sore loser. But, like, I don't even like TSM. I just thought, like, the whole time watching the series, I'm like, I think TSM is, like, looking better for more of the time. And it's just very strange that we just added four more hours to the series. <laughs> yeah. um, so, I think this is absurd i think that riot because it was riot's fault and not any of the team's fault or a bug or something like it was just audio or server issues or whatever it was they should have like pushed it back they should have rescheduled there's no excuse for this it it was so sad for tsm to just like sit there for hours and hours whenever they had like they went they went game one right and then the other team can't even get tilted because they just have this they get to have two hours to think about it mm-hmm. and then they play game two i I think that is just a really big black mark on them. And if TSM yeah. was the old TSM, like with the old fan base, there is no way this wouldn't have gone down like as easily as, as it did. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, th- I think it should have just been rescheduled or pushed back or something. I mean, this was kind of crazy. I was, I was sitting here watching LCS at midnight, man. Like I, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know what to say. It's, it, it felt like it really just ruined the competitive integrity of the game. Uh, like no one was playing well on either team for the most part and it honestly didn't feel like either team even cared about winning they just wanted out <laughs> just get it over with <laughs> like it, it was mm-hmm. it was hard to watch and i imagine it was just as hard to play for them because especially for a lot of these pauses but because there was what like six or seven of them most of these pauses are during game and you can't just like get up and go you just have to sit there yeah. for like yeah. an hour and do nothing and accept stare at the screen. You can't scroll through Reddit on your on the computer because it's not your computer. <laughs> yeah, you, you, that's right. You have to you have to sit there and stare at the league client. How many times can you like look in your <sighs> look in your loot box and then realize, oh wait, this is this is a uh, tournament realm. There are there is no chess here. Like it's <laughs> there's there's nothing to do. And I feel like it made it it, it was so bad. It, it was just bad. It, it should have been postponed and remade. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I don't like how it happened. It's kind of unfortunate. I don't know. Like, there, there's no good or bad because if you if you remake it, then you have to push the Sunday game off, and then you're playing on a weekday for the deciding match. So it's complicated. I don't know what the right choice is. I think Doublelift clarified on the co-stream that um, when there's a pause like this, the team that has the bug they work through it and the other team has to sit there in silence because otherwise the other team would have more time to talk to their team about strategy while the other team has to deal oh, with Oh, right, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. There's, so TSM is just sitting there, silent, while uh, EG is getting their bug fixed. Um, that oh. is just miserable. Like It used to be worse where you just had to be silent no matter what the entire time. 
So it used to be a lot worse, and this is, I think, better and more fair, but still sucks, right? Um, and and then, like, yeah, I mean, I kind of feel like also just the momentum and the way that the teams were playing, this actually reminded me a lot of Team Liquid versus Clutch Gaming in that, that same year we were just talking about earlier, where it looked like Clutch Gaming was just playing better than Team Liquid. This was the super roster with, like, Jensen, Double if Core JJ, Impact, uh, and and Smithy, right? And they looked like they were going to lose to Clutch Gaming in playoffs and not make it to Worlds. And then, you know what the, the Double if does? They pull out Sona Derek and they close Yeah, the there series. you go. That's exactly what the hell EG did. They felt like they were losing. They were not. They didn't have an advantage against TSM. They brought out Seraphine for the, for the last two games to clutch, to, to, to clutch out the game with a crazy draft pick, right? And it just felt like the same sort of vibe to me where it's like, wait, this team that we didn't prepare for and totally underestimated is actually going to shit on us and beat us. We have to actually bring out our like S tier strat to not lose. <laughs> and I thought that was funny. I thought, hey, that's kind of impressive by uh, by TSM. The, the power of the underdog is very real. Like yeah. you have nothing to like TSM had absolutely nothing to lose. Tactical has literally been getting shit on. All yeah. long. Like, <laughs> he's got nothing to lose man like he's got right. nothing so i thought it was funny that it reminded me of that uh time for tl versus clutch gaming but also like damn man what a weird day what a weird we were literally one or two games depending on how you look at it two games from like a tsm versus clg match yeah that is insane guys like these teams were like one game away from maybe making the worlds like that's crazy. We almost yeah. had DSM versus CLG in the new age of time. So um, it, it just added, honestly, it kind of sucked, but it was such like a great, like just fuel of like this weekend was one of the craziest weekends of LCS we've ever had. Crazy yeah. pauses, five game series everywhere, almost DSM versus CLG. Instead, it's EG versus TL. It's just like everything was crazy. Yeah, yeah I, I kind of, uh, I kind of like that, you know, and good for, I know TSM has been going through a lot of, disasters this split but you know nice to for the players at least i'm thinking about the players like to have to go through all of that at least this is something they could take away and be like dang we we almost did it like we did pretty yeah. pretty well and they got this little now now again speak of leaving kind of erases all of that again because it's like oh great we got to rebuild for next year but hey at least for the players it's a good morale boost and say like we can still do it you know we we've got enough talent and skill to you know put a hurting in in the playoffs. And I also, you know, think in the bigger scheme of things, uh, you know, I was really against top eight before, and maybe this is a fluke year, but I hope it's not because the fact that, yeah, records might be one thing, you know, and the regular season is a whole different thing. Right. But playoffs, this playoffs has showed me that man, like if this is as close as the talent really is like where, yeah, on a general day, you know, nine, you know, eight out of 10 times, like, TL will beat, you know, one of these lower place teams, but there's yeah. a, still a possibility like that a TSM can come back and win. Like, I like that. I like that about our league. I, I, I like the fact that, oh, on any given day, even the eighth place team could have your number and that's good to see. And I'm hoping for the sake of LCS that that continues to happen because pretty sweet. Yeah. Like I mean, just pretty look sweet. At Golden Guardians. They right. won one game out of like eight in the regular season. They took CLG to five games. By transit property, they took TL to five games. By yeah. transit property, they took EG to five games. They're one game away from Worlds, guys. I like that crazy. math. I like that yeah, math. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's kind really of good. Math. But it's, <laughs> it's wild. It's wild, yeah. right? I, I think that the fact that all these were five games, it just makes it so much closer. It's just like, mm -hmm. wow, we really don't know what the who the best team is. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, what about uh, EG Team Liquid? I, does it, I mean, I know we talked about them a bit, but anything about their series you wanted to point out? Anything special? I mean, I know oh, we saw that Akali <laughs> yeah. uh, Bjergsen didn't have it. Uh, the Galio, I don't know. I like the Jinx picks, but I, I think Evil Evil Geniuses had a pretty good game plan against that, uh, especially with the MF and, and GP. But what, what were your thoughts on any of those drafts or games? I think the Liquid played this series all right. I think that they figured out that Talia is actually good for them, and like Bjergsen actually played a good, like some really good games on Talia. Like they mm -hmm. lost one and one two, right? He was like letting three main flicks over and over, and like yeah, sure, some of that is EG being incapable of hitting the flash button, but like you still have to find those angles. And I think Bjergsen in that sense played quite well in those games. I think Santorin was 
an absolute Chad. Like, I think at least four games, maybe all five. He just got first blood in like the funniest way. Is he was just like level one gank, level two. Like, yeah. he just got all the angles. There was one game where Inspire tried to find the angle bot to do the same thing, and then like it didn't work. I saw and that. I remember like, that. Yeah, man. It's just he like he was on Trundle too, I think. Wasn't yeah, it? It was, yeah, it was. It was the classic, right? It was yeah. game four or three. Yeah. And I was like, no, I'm sorry, you just can't do it. So, I think that Liquid still had an answer. Like, in like they thought Jinx was the answer, but they didn't really have the draft resources to do it. It didn't feel like they always got what they wanted. Like game four, they got. Jinx, and then they had to sell for Nautilus because they didn't prio yeah. Lulu early, right? And that kind of just cursed them because, like, they needed that for like. I, I, unfortunately, while Hansama was playing way better on Jinx throughout this and the previous years, he can't do it without the Enchanter resources. Like, it, it is clear that he's not self sufficient enough. And honestly, most AD carries won't be when your opponent is only drafting to kill Jinx. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I think Liquid looked good overall. Like, I don't think. Like there is no world that Liquid should have won this in my mind because this was the world where Danny didn't show up. Mm -hmm. Like almost every game, he was just bad. Like he was dying, he was getting killed, or just not doing as much. Except for maybe game five, I think he hit game five and four. He had some, or maybe it's three and five. He had some really good MF all angles, and just like his team was just getting clapped, right? And JoJo was getting like bashed into a wall by Orn with nothing else happening <laughs> with flash up. So. I think Team Liquid did what they could, and this is just kind of shows the limitations of the roster. This also shows that Hansa and Falling Off is likely because of meta. Um, I think this series less so, but the previous series and some of this series, like his Jinx, even when Jinx isn't the strongest character, is still good. I, I, I truly believe that despite him losing three games on Jinx, I think he was actually like way better. You could see like he knew about spacing and knew about laning and everything. And you can see why they picked this guy up and why he looked good in spring. He just looked pretty bad in summer in his meta. Um, for, but the problem is, like, he's a top tier AD carry and he's been playing for like six years. He should know how to play other characters. Like, there's yeah. it's not the Danny excuse, right? Danny's like, bro, I didn't see Civ. When I started playing the game, no one was playing Sivir anymore. Or like, it was the end of the Sivir era when he started playing. So I, mean, I, I can understand part of it because I do think it was. I, I, my understanding is the thought process because EG was banning. What was it Sivir and Callista every, every game? game. Yep. So then yep. TL bans Zeri. That's the top 380 carry is gone. And then you take the Jinx away because you know that's what Danny's going to play. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't understand why they kept opting into the Jinx versus Misfortune matchup because yep. that is very, very miserable. Yeah. But I agree with you. I, I, can, I do understand the Jinx picks. I think, what the, I think part of the reason why. Hansama, like after looking back, I think Hans. A lot of the reason why Hansama didn't look as good is because his it's not his supports meta, and AD carries live and die by their support a lot of the time. And obviously, Core is a good player, but like, it's he he's definitely not as good on enchanters as he is on engage. Yeah, I I think that the opting into blind picking Jinx while the MF is open and shown as a very strong counter, it was a little troll. I think like. You just had to, if you want to blind pick Jinx, you, you kind of just had to protect it. Otherwise, yeah, I just don't think you pick Jinx that early, maybe. I don't know. Like, if TL was really up in the, the up, it felt like TL had nothing, honestly, in my opinion. It felt like TL was just up against the back of the wall, and they were literally in draft saying, we have nothing, but we need we need Hansama and Jinx. That doesn't matter. We just need Hansama and Jinx. And it felt like mm -hmm. they were picking in situations where, it just looked really bad. Like, yeah, I mean, he he just didn't have a good draft around him. Like, and he wasn't playing against a good draft at all in the last three games, I think. Uh, they did win one of them. And that's because, well, honestly, it, uh, game three, right? They won Jinx into MF, but that was with a series of throws from JoJo and Danny. <laughs> um, and it was a very close game three, too. So I, I think the, the Jinx pick was... I, I think it was actually kind of bad, honestly. I think it honestly was kind of game losing, series losing, because of how easy the MF is. Like, Jinx is so hard to execute. MF is easy as shit. Like, especially when you go lethality. And it felt like when both players, like, both AD key carries were playing pretty poorly, positioning wise, I think. Um, you just give them the easier AD carry, and you give them the winning matchup. It's like, how, how is Hansama supposed to play the game, right? So. I, I thought it was pretty bad. 
Um, I think that if we're going to keep going on draft, we can talk about gameplay later. I thought the, the Galio pick was... I understood it. Uh, Double have said on the co-stream that Galio is actually really, really good into Rakan. You can just... You have multiple abilities to just stop Rakan engage. And also, if you aren't there, uh, Galio ulti is great at helping post recon engage and stuff like that um but i just thought talia was the right move i mean three insane games from bjergsen on talia talia is also great into recon you just reaction you just reaction press e and you can stun the recon before you can get in there i'm pretty sure i'm not entirely certain but i think talia rocks will stop recon's w like he'll do the dash but he won't knock the ball up yeah so i thought that was i thought talia was pretty obvious there but they didn't go for it um that was a bummer. I also think that, like, Santorin had one bad game. It was game four on Wukong. He would just go in and die immediately. Kind of a bummer. You're playing against Trundle. There's not much you can do. But otherwise, Santorin had a great series. I also think that, uh, I don't know, man. Bwipo running back the uh, the Orn into playing it into GP. He picked it into GP Trundle on, like, I think it was R3. I thought that was game losing. Like, that was just, like, what is Orn even supposed to do against GP Trundle? Uh, and then you're playing against MF2, who's just one shot in your ADC. What is Orn even really supporting, right? So I, I do think that TL had a lot of opportunities to have better drafts. And, and it wasn't even like we're talking, like, what's the ideal thing, like, in the world? It was just in-series meta. I felt like they had already figured out, they already had shown, like, ways to have better drafts. They just didn't opt for it for some reason. And I think that in hindsight, you know, it's obviously easier. We're not in the pressure situation, but they're going to look at it and probably come to similar conclusions. Like, why didn't I just pick Talia game five? Or why yeah. didn't we just pick Lulu here really early or Yumi really early, right? Yeah. Um, so why did we pick Orin into GP Trundle? Like, there's all these stuff that I thought was uh, well, strange. I thought they should have yeah. just done their same exact, you know, pick ban for game four. I mean, I, I think... I, even though Jinx isn't great into MF, I, I thought their their comp did fine. I actually thought it was funny that they were the ones running the Jinx Orn combo as opposed to EG because that's the, that's what took them out basically last time, right? And so I I didn't mind it. I just wish that they uh, and Team Liquid they changed their their two bands from they had banned in Game Three Team Liquid banned GP and Camille. I mean and Gwen. I'm sorry. And then in Game Four they banned Ezreal and Tom Kench. Um, I think the GP really hurt um, in the game GP four. Was first rotation though from EG. They literally oh, that's right. Game. Yeah, you're right. That's yeah. true. Never mind. Okay. Yeah. Like, so I mean, yeah. but that that and that is a good answer. It's a good it's a good counter to it. And I think that really did change the game. And the fact that Core didn't get Lulu for uh, the Jinx, I thought made a huge difference as well. Um, and then you're right about game five. I didn't. I wasn't too sure about the Galio pick. But um, all right. Any any final thoughts on that on that series? I, I mean, we just got to talk about a couple of plays. I think that need mentioning. Okay. Um, so, uh, so the first one, and I really hate to rag on it. This oh is boy. just so unexcusable. Hansama, he rockets Danny when he's basically half HP, and he recalls in a bush. This is game five, by the way. Yeah. And freaking inspired on Poppy is just walking up on him, and he just slams him against the wall, yeah. and he dies. Okay, that's bad, right? So... He didn't flash the stun, he cleanses it, he gets Lulu ulti, and then he flashes over the wall. Kind of a waste of resources, but hey, he lives. And then all of Team Liquid just fly in, man. Galio ultis, Aatrox TP's in, Santorin's in there. They're just, it's just like, I don't know, man. TL went like full on save Hansama, and Hansama was like, I'm out. I got no mana, I'm recalling. Okay, I'll throw an auto here. You know what I mean? It was just like... That was when, and then that was when I was just realized, like, their in-game shot calling or whoever's making the, the call is just either, they're either on different pages of the rest of the team or it's just a straight-up bad call, right? Because it is so obvious that, first of all, Hansama should not be in there. And secondly, right, like, Hansa, like where's Hansama's communication? He should be saying, as he's getting fucked in the ass by Poppy and flashing yeah. over the wall... Get out! I need a yeah. recall. Let's leave. It it was just baffling to me. I thought that was one of the situations where it's literally like, are these guys even in comms? So I was pretty. That was a very disappointing moment for me. I watched it over, over and over again. The co stream flamed the crap out of it. I'm <laughs> sure the cast was confused just as well. It's like all five players are just trolling at the same time, and uh, that's game losing. That was like, 
holy crap dude <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah that that was a play um then then the other one was just you know danny okay so there's that time where danny like died twice in a row right they they get mountain soul and then eg they run bot lane right and then danny they they're trying to kill santorin under tower silas he misses his e the play should have probably been over as soon as he missed e but they keep going for the play and then inspired danny and vulcan are like flanking from the jungle to the bot tower and uh silas uh jojo and impact are near the tower diving and tanking it right and you just see danny he gets trundle pillared he gets atrox w'd and he gets like jinx rocketed and stuff and jinx w'd and he's just stuck and he flashes he ulties he gets pulled back in by atrox and yeah. i was like everybody was telling him saying he was trolling right and i kind of agree he was trolling but i do think like Dude, that is just such a sus place to be. Like, that is so easy to get screwed over by Trundle Pillar right there. Like, I just don't think you walk through that area. And it looked super troll. Danny's ulting and he gets pulled by by Aatrox chain and dies with flat <laughs> after using flash and everything up. Uh, so that was just a really bad look. And then he had another death in mid lane where he's just like autoing and autoing, and clearly the play is over. Everybody else is leaving, and he's still autoing. And so there's a Jinx W that looks like it's aimed at Vulcan, but he E's, he's not, he's playing Rakan. Vulcan E's behind Danny to dodge the W and it hits Danny. His strut falls off and he's too slow to run away and he dies <laughs> and freaking Vulcan just dips and he's like, thanks for taking it, buddy. I'm out of here. I was like, holy crap, dude. Oh, this is just was. some miserable gameplay I'm watching. It was just a comedy of errors, okay? I know we're kind of getting into flame territory right now, but I can't help but laugh, man. Ulting you know, on an Aatrox chain and getting pulled, it's just yeah. so funny. <laughs> you know, I think we should have a segment, a recurring segment, where you pick out the one most <laughs> boneheaded play of the <laughs> week. Because it is actually kind of funny. Like, you know, it'd be like it's a funny, so funny kind of segment. <laughs> yeah, just kind of like, uh, you know how, uh, well, so for NBA fans, like Shaq and a Fool, like they'll have like the most boneheaded like NBA plays of the week. It'd be fun to have just like pick your top three and maybe we'll vote on one just because it is sometimes <laughs> funny to see pros make errors where you're like what is happening right now so kind of and, and especially in a series with all that was in this you know with all the pressure of like hey man we're whoever wins this is going to worlds like it's still funny yeah. that you know things like this are happening uh let's let's talk about the 100 thieves c9 series because this one you know this one was going to be between basically one and two and uh you know winner was going to sit atop and wait for the challengers and losers bracket. But uh, 100 Thieves did lose in four games. You know, honestly, I was going to say, like, I was really happy that Cloud9 was still good. Because I was going to be really sad if Cloud9 came back and was, like, terrible. Just like, you know, like like they hadn't actually gotten better. Because I, if it was a fluke, that would have just been terrible. Because they, they knocked out, you know, TL or EG, like one of those, right? So the fact that they're good and they actually look like they're the first place team right now. I'm happy because we're going to go into worlds and we actually have the proper representatives. I'm just hoping they continue to build on this because right now I'm really liking how they're playing. Uh, I'm really liking how the team seems to be synergizing well and hitting their stride together. Um, you know, I also like some of their picks, uh, like with Fudge's champion pool. Like I, I love seeing the Kennen for some reason. Like I, th I just think that's like such a really good pick. And, you know, the fact that he plays Camille, like I like the picks that they have. Um, so really excited about that. But what did you guys think about that series? It was oddly enough, only a four game series, uh, even as good as these two teams are. Uh, but uh, again, like I said, so glad that cloud nine is, uh, really looking good. hundred thieves, honestly, like they look good too. Like, yeah, they lost this one, but with EG not having Danny, it's most likely this will be the rematch, uh, for first and second. So I guess we can kind of expand on everything there, like the drafts, the games, but then also since we're both saying, or since we all seem to agree that EG isn't likely to be, you know, one or two, we can also kind of predict our winners for, uh, you know, summer split here because this is most likely the matchup. So I'll leave it at that. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on that series? Yeah. Um, series Cloud9 kept the same form that they showed during the previous match. I think it was really impressive that Fudge got four Sedge bands, two Fiora and three Kenna bands throughout the series. Like, Showing the Kennen game ones like that weird pick that if it does work, 
then like they have to be scared of it the whole rest of the series. And like clearly, Hundred Thieves respected it, which is good. Um, interestingly enough, I actually thought that the early game in Nivea was really good, and then I think Hundred Thieves had a great answer to it uh, in terms of just like flanking and just like finding ins, especially because Gwen just ignores it, right? Like that's Gwen specifically has a really disruptive effect on a character like Anivia. Um but I thought the I thought it was still a good character. Uh, interesting enough, even though we talk a lot about Berserker being played around and everything, Jensen had the highest DPM on his team at mm. 499. Uh, Berserker at 479. And Fudge had a higher one than Berserker too at 485. So like that's a little skewed because like some of those characters, like especially Nyla, like don't do a lot of DPS until right. like later. Like they do very little. Um I think Hundred Thieves across the board actually had like okay performances i think they showed some variety like i liked the look of seraphine mid actually and then still getting the zeri lulu like it showed that like both of these teams can play meta both these teams like a lot of the meta picks they were willing to pick out and they're the last thing i wanted to leave on is like c9 was the only team in na to make nyla work and i think that's going to be important i think that if she gets just one buff between now and worlds and it might not happen because we already seen two of the patches but if she gets one buff she's going to be busted. And um, I think she's pretty close to it. Yeah, I mean, I I think Nyla's fine as a champ. She just doesn't have the numbers to support it. And I think that, in my opinion, that's why she's bad, because I don't know why he picked it. And I honestly don't even think Nyla was that, or at least in comparison, was that big of an issue uh, in comparison to, like, you know, the Azir or the Camille. I think it was the Azir, right? They had Azir that game? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, Jensen's 8-2... and two. And Fudge is five and one. Like I, I think the game looks the exact same. Honestly, it might even look easier with it, like you know, different eighty carry champ. So I, I don't know. I'm still not convinced on Nyla. I don't think she's very good. Uh, I think uh, we have to look a bit more at the game because Nyla, like Berserker, didn't do anything until he got to mid game fights and he just jumped on to Seraphine and assassinated him. So it played more like an assassin than an eighty carry in that doesn't really do much, just kind of sits around and then jumps in and one shots somebody. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I get that, but yeah, I just feel but... like if you want to play an AD carry like that, just play Twitch. Twitch is just yeah, better. but there's no dash. Twitch doesn't have a dash. Nyla yeah. literally would dash through people to get to the Seraphine and kill her in the fights. Uh, and yeah, but he doesn't Uji's have to get as close as the thing. Like, I, I don't know. I, 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 underst I, I understand why Nyla can be strong. I just don't think right now she's very good. Yeah, I, I think that it, it's really hard to compare apples to oranges with the, such wildly different champions. I don't know, right? Well, it's no it's like the there. same style. You're, 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 in my opinion, at least, like you're going, like you're trying to assassinate the Seraphine, right? Like Twitch will just do it from a screen away versus Nyla, who can't play the game until 25 minutes. If you're going to bank on a like mid to late game champ like that, I, I wouldn't. I mean, be doing it with Nyla. yeah. We can have this argument over and over again, but there's so many variables that will take no, into account lading phase, like how do people play around it, where it's picked to the draft, all this stuff. So mm -hmm. regardless, Nila won. Nila, yeah, I don't know I how did. it's pronounced. Nila, Nila won. Um, I thought it was interesting. I do think, honestly, it should have been a Cloud9 3-0. The only game that 100 Thieves won was when they got Callista. Very clearly, C9 gave over Callista to test the waters, to see if they could try something. They wanted to try a Felios Renata into it and a Nivea and all this crap into into the Callista. And I think that I mean honestly, it, should, it could have been a Cloud9 3 if they didn't give it over because 100 Thieves very clearly looked absolutely insane with Callista. Like their, their engages and all their coordination was just like through the roof like really, really well oiled. Uh, and then you got to the other comps and there was a little, it was a little less organized and stuff like that. Um, so I, I do think Cloud9 could have 3 0'd them. Um, I also think that it's it's weird how much priority Someday had on Aatrox. I get that it's a really strong pick right now and it's really good. And I get that Gwen is also nerfed, but isn't that champ just disgustingly broken? Like, isn't Gwen just absolutely atrocious with an enchanter, especially? So I, I, I think they like to think about that too. Um, I also think that the. They, they had, like, just zero priority on Trundle, which I thought was interesting. Closer did have a great series. He actually had some insane plays on Wukong repeatedly. But I, I have to wonder if there's a reason why there's no Trundle prio at all in this uh, in this uh, uh between these two teams. Um, and I, I also thought it was interesting that they, they did go for the Seraphine mid. Um, 
I do think Seraphine mid is still good, uh, but uh, they were flaming it on the coast stream a lot. Like Double H was saying, it was a bad pick because, like, they had no front line for the Seraphine, and Seraphine mm -hmm. seemed like they had to get in. But I, I actually credit that to more to Abadage's play. He was just always up forward, and especially it was the um, it was the fight around Elder or one of the last drags or whatever uh, in game four, and Abadage is just up there whiffing abilities he threw his qe and missed everybody and he just got trumbo pilder he got trumbo pillars behind him and then he had no flash and he died and i was like is that seraphine's problem or is that abadagi's problem because i think the champ's <laughs> yeah. still broken right and maybe if he landed some stuff things go differently or if he just wasn't up there in the first place to get insect by a trundle pillar so there's a lot of weird stuff that i think that hundred thieves could uh fix up but so clearly like at least on a mechanical level Hundred Thieves and C9 are the two best teams. Yeah, like, they have such they have the Christmas mechanics. I do think that Hundred Thieves, where they're lacking, was like kind of early decision making. Like somebody was getting caught out a lot, super randomly, in the most strange positions in the early game. Um, and yeah, and and it did kind of feel like oh man, that game four draft they had um the most basic meta draft, right? Uh, it was Aatrox, Wukong, Ari, Lucian, Nami. How many times have we seen those champions <laughs> this year? Yeah. Uh, and then they played it into Nar, Poppy, LeBlanc, Zeri, Lulu. Like, this is the most resident sleeper draft. But it was like, holy crap. It is so one-sided for C9, though. Like, it, the draft was just like, 100 Thieves just went down the book and like, let's pick the meta champion here, meta champion there. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, wait, we actually have a really crappy draft into the opponent. Poppy, LeBlanc completely screw us in every situation. Um, so, yeah, I, I think 100 Thieves has a lot to think about when it comes to draft. I do think that um, their play in the later stages was pretty legit. Um, but, yeah, just early game stuff for 100 Thieves got to fix up a little bit. Draft got to fix up a little bit. But they're really close to they're competitive in every single game so yeah. yeah i will say uh what i liked about c9 is that both mid and top lane uh picks so jensen and fudge they they picked a different champ every game like it, it's pretty uh insane uh, and even abadaga picked different champ uh mid lane but most champs you know we see two or three right uh and so it was pretty interesting to see cloud nine show a lot of different looks um and i think that and to see them execute pretty well was 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 awesome to see. And I will say, like, even though it was 3 1, I mean, these games lasted a long time. Uh, the first game was 43 minutes, second game, 36 minutes. Their shortest game was game three, 31 minutes, and then their game four was 43 minutes. I did feel as I was watching each of those games too, even like there'd be a point where I'm like, all right, this is over. But then, you know, the next team fight later, uh, like it would be back to even again. And that 2K gold leave or whatever, you know, whatever one team had was erased uh, from the next fight. And so it did seem kind of back and forth to me. And I, it was really like, you know, I, I laugh, I kid a lot of times where like, you know, we have some series where it's close, but it's not necessarily the best gameplay. Uh, but here I really did feel like for the most, uh, for the most part, it felt like good gameplay and it was just going back and forth. And these teams really knew how to execute, had good mechanics. And I, f I felt like they team team fought well. And so I really was enjoying the series overall, even though it was a three, you know, three one. I did think the series was pretty close and I'm, I'm looking forward to to what's going to happen um, in when they rematch again, because I'm, I'm, I'm guessing if I had a bet, I'm guessing 100 Thieves is going to make it back. Um, but you guys want to give your predictions as far as who's who's going to win this? I mean, I'll go ahead and start since I, I kind of alluded to it, but uh, I think it's going to be C9. I think it will be a game. I think it will be five games. I know that's kind of a cop out, but seeing as close how close it was, uh, I do think 100 Thieves maybe goes back to the drawing board a little bit and, and maybe comes up with something interesting in their drafts. But I'm excited for it either way. I don't expect to see a stomp. And if it is a stomp, Man, that would one suck and two, I'll have to eat my words. But I think it's going to be five games really close, uh, but I think C9 is going to win it. I uh, so I'm going in person, so I'm kind of invested oh, in it. Oh yeah, that's I awesome. Am a little, because Kyori is stepping in for Danny, like at first I was like, oh dude, it's just a three zero, right? You just have a new eighty carry w one week before playoffs in yeah. person, right? But from what I hear, he's apparently another Turkish eighty carry. Apparently, maybe as good, if not better, than Luger is like what the hype was coming in, and he's apparently top two academies. It's just Reddit what they're saying. 
Top mm-hmm. two Academy along with Yan, the Yan, the uh, TLA AD carry. So honestly, that might just be an upgrade over Danny. Like wow, uh, yeah. Danny's current form. Like what he showed and what he was like this whole playoffs, this might be what they need. Just someone to fill in that slot. There's so much raw talent around that that's just doing so well anyways. And I think this might be enough to make it close. That being said, you still can't get a rookie to, you know, LCS playoffs sim- uh top three level that quickly so i think it's going to be a 3-1 100 thieves should win that 100 thieves is solid they're not the most exciting with their drafts but they are definitely solid they know what they want and they usually make it work as we saw with the c9 100 thieves series uh in the rematch in the finals c9 should win i also think it's going to be a 3-1 again i i personally think that c9 like already explored what 100 thieves had to offer and i don't think the the bad side about being so stable and knowing what you want is it's harder to pull out like out of meta looks right like liquid pulled out jinx out of nowhere and won three games in a row against clg stopped wise there's just not that risk i think from 100 thieves now i could be proven wrong i would love to see it but i just i think c9 has been firing all cylinders and berserker is better than fbi even the fbi has been playing better than regular season yeah for me i think i just think eg might win uh, but I'm still gonna go 100 thieves. Mm. I'm. I think we're actually gonna see a 3-2. Uh, because I think the main thing, or 3-2 for 100 thieves. I'll clarify that. Okay. Because I think while there is obviously the inexperience with Kaori, is that how you pronounce it? You're uh, okay, I'll, probably I'll, I'll, right. I'll just go. I'll just go with that. Um, <laughs> okay. I I think the mental reset, and I think it's also it also might be really good for inspired as well. Um, because yeah. there's a chance that he probably had or. Kiori probably has a better champion pool. Um, but I'm not going to go against 100 Thieves for that. I do think it's actually going to be a fairly good series. However, the finals, I think Cloud9 is just going to sweep them. Okay. Wow, close. Um, I think they have I, I think they have a blueprint for how to beat 100 Thieves. They just don't let Callista through. Because aside from that, I just don't see where 100 Thieves is going to beat them. Now, I feel it's bad to go against 100 Thieves because it seems like every time we doubt them, they happen <laughs> yeah. to win anyways. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I I think Cloud9 knows how to beat 100 Thieves. I think I expect a 3-0. Yeah. Yeah, it might be a 3-0 in the finals. Uh, the one thing mm-hmm. that does scare me about predicting against 100 Thieves is like lower bracket buff almost always wins. I think there's only been one time where lower bracket didn't win and that was to be fair that was cloud nine who did that they won from the other bracket uh, but their competition was FlyQuest. so i mean no no shame about that FlyQuest. quest but literally that FlyQuest quest roster just got solo like two weeks before this was back in uh 20, 2020 um so the circumstances are a bit different right 100 thieves is not that fly quest and c9 is different org as well and this is in the summer so lower bracket i think always wins in summer since we've had it so we'll see how that goes. C9 would have to break a record to basically win this. Um, I do think that just from what we've seen from all the series and playoffs uh, with with upper and lower brackets is that holy cow momentum from the previous day is massive. Yes. Like EG came into that final weekend last split with like literally just losing, losing, losing. Oh, we get a pentakill game one. We sweep the entire weekend. Like yeah. that, that was just crazy. So who knows? Like if 100 Thieves has just an absolute banger against EG, right? And they, they play like some of the best league of their life. They might just keep going and they might mm-hmm. just 3-0 reverse like C9. Maybe C9 starts quaking the boots. Who knows? I think if we go off the current power level and what we've seen and not a lot changes, then yeah, C9 is going to probably sweep in the finals, uh, sweep 100 Thieves in the finals. I don't know. 100 Thieves is a very smart org, though. I think they take a lot and they learn from the series that they played against C9, and they get momentum if they beat EG. So there's a chance. I'm still going to go. C9 is going to win, but man, it's it's a tough one. I don't like betting against lower bracket stuff like that. Like, lower bracket wins in not just our <laughs> region. It wins a lot in, in EU also. Like, yeah. G2 almost always came from the lower bracket and won randomly, even though they were garbage tier for the, for the entire year. Yeah. So... It's uh, it, it's tough to say, man. It really is. Um, I will say for for C9 sake though, I think I didn't praise him enough. Jensen is playing so damn good. Uh, I was talking with Alistair in the Discord chat, and we were looking at a CS. 
it was before 10 minutes he had almost 100 he had over 100 cs i think yeah and yeah. he um i, I yeah. looked at it he missed three cs in the first 10 minutes yeah wow yeah that's a little crazy guys that's not that's not normal that's like robot chovy level stuff like that's disgusting yeah. uh and then after that he literally has a homing beacon on his chains like Whatever map hacks he got from EG series, it stayed. Riot officials did not find it. He can still <laughs> land every single chain on LeBlanc. It's kind of disgusting. Um, so I don't think you guys should give him that champion. He's kind of crazy with it. Um, I also think that, like, dude, like, they're just blabber. Is an absolute psychopath. That Wukong engage when he was 1 oh, HP. Oh, yeah. He's getting nice. chased down. He had 1 HP. He stopwatched. He flashes in. And then, and then, freaking Fudge flashes it on Kennen, and it was like, "Oh, that's sick. That was a cool play." But see, that's that this really is the nice. same. This is the same style and type of player that will do that, and it looks really bad because they'll just die. Yeah. But like when it when he's clicking and when now, I, you know, he does seem to have tend to have one speed, which is go go go. But he did have some sick sick engages and re-engages where i was like oh okay i didn't expect that nice one nice one and but you're right you know for that to work he has to have a team that's tightly coordinated with him and it does seem like they're clicking like that so good good for him and good for the team because it's pretty exciting to watch uh see them all back him up um yeah. i i think it's also interesting that like this team is making a lot of mistakes too like blabber mm -hmm. still yeah. had some weird engages fudge was being really awkward like we actually saw berserker make some mechanical mistakes as well on aphelios uh, Jensen got caught out. Dude, that game one, Jensen gets caught out at 40 minutes, and then they dance around Elder, and he just TPs to mid lane and walks his way front doors all the <laughs> that way That was the Nexus. hilarious, yeah. Oh, one yeah. HP on him to kill the Nexus. It was like Jensen literally made the mistake that won them the game. Because <laughs> yeah. if Jensen didn't get caught out, yeah. they would just be five-man dancing at right. Elder, right? But he just TPs mid, runs it down. Um so like these, this, uh, Cloud9 is still making a ton of errors and a ton of un unforced errors and a ton of yeah. mistakes. They have more to improve on. That's insane to me. They can still they can still reach higher heights. So, um, I, I mean, I hope C9 just does really well. But they have a close competition against Hundred Thieves. Yeah. And then maybe they don't get screwed over in groups as our first seed, and they do something. So that would be cool. Yeah, I I, I mean I am excited for them again. Like they're representing. So I want all our teams to do well. Um, but yeah, the fact that they're, they're on this momentum swing, I hope they continue to build on that. Um, is there any like last thoughts or any meta stuff you want to discuss? I know we've kind of been on the same patch, uh, but any final things you want to throw out there, uh, in the podcast sphere <laughs> before we yeah. wrap things up? My final thing is they announced that Champions Cube will be coming back for Worlds. Nice. And it's going to be mostly moving servers with the location. I believe the only one it's not yeah. chasing is the uh, the play-in, not the play-in, the group stage, or maybe it was quarterfinals. One location wasn't being moved for, so we might have some downtime there. But we're going to see, like, Chovy versus, like, Double If or something. Yeah, like, that's awesome. It's gonna, like, they're not going to be lane opponents, obviously, but rule over stubble if, so, I, I, again, I guess, <laughs> if he doesn't get yeah. triggered by that. Um, I, I can't wait. This is going to be some of the most exciting times of the year. This is my favorite time of the year. Both playoffs up from the playoffs run all the way to Worlds is the best. And we had a great playoffs, guys. Like, there was not a yeah. single 3-0. That's, in, that's insanity. We had, like, GGS off the back of just getting River, like, two weeks before the end of the split. Go to game five. We had... CLG and TSM, who were, well, especially TSM, was looking like they were dead in the water getting fifth. Yeah. That's crazy. It's not like, not a terrible split with the roster and the problems they had. They had nine substitutions or mm. something in like just this split alone. So, um, yeah. It's to close out, I think Champs Q is going to be amazing. I'm glad they're bringing it back. And I think this was a great playoffs. I had such a good time watching it. And if we had playoffs like this when LCS was like starting to lose steam a bit, I think that they wouldn't have. I think that they're yeah. finally getting it together. I hope it's enough. But um, yeah, I, I'm really glad that they're making better decisions now. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. I, uh, I'm really excited to see Champs Q. I'm really excited to hear all the off-season rumors. I'm really yeah. excited to see who goes where, what kind of drama we spice up. We already know, right? Some, because it's going to be Champs Q in NA, and I think that when we get to California, I imagine that we'll be able to have, on like very low ping, 
all the champs queue like people and mm -hmm. all the pro players and all the world's representatives and all the coaches and everything able to play with each other and stuff. I think when we move around, uh, the ping might be a bit of an issue for some people. Um, but yeah, it's going to be really exciting. It's going to be really interesting. Um, what One thing I'm definitely looking forward to the most, though, is like we're going to get like some hype game in like champs queue that's going to totally bait us into thinking that this team's going to be really really good yeah and they totally sh it happens every year some team yeah. or some players just popping the f off in solo queue playing with some of the best and then i mean this happened with literally tsm i remember there's this crazy highlight in 2020 where double lift and biofrost were like popping the f off in solo queue and then they went 06 and world so i'm excited for the overreactions i'm excited for all that jazz um I, I uh, I'm glad with the representatives we have right now. I think that we we, we could have honestly, I would have been happy with TL going. I would have been happy with CLG going. Honestly, TSM if they, I don't know, man. Maybe they could have gone to it would have been funny. Like there's just there's just so much weirdness. Um, last thing I will say is that we collectively I think power ranked TSM to be seventh and eighth and just. What the hell, man? They actually did make fifth, right? They did. Isn't that just stupid? <laughs> it's like that's Part they were right. garbage tier all year long. Uh, yeah. yeah, regular season does not matter. It really doesn't. I like, knew it. It just doesn't. It doesn't matter. You put TL or or EG or whatever at eighth place, they could do just like Golden Guardians did, except just win one or two more games, exactly. and then boom, they're worlds. Yep. I don't think regular season matters. I do think that I wouldn't even hate it if we made regular season shorter and just dive deeper into having longer maybe not longer playoffs but i wish i saw c9 versus tl right i wish i saw uh eg versus 100 thieves in playoffs yeah. right These honestly clg tl clg tl right well we did see that um oh did we but, oh wait i'm gonna yeah, did. yeah <laughs> clg but we didn't see clg 100 Again. thieves right we didn't see clg eg right there's all these matches we could have mm -hmm. seen probably not enough time but we're gonna get to worlds and it's gonna be like boom 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 oh we wait a week and then quarters. Oh, we wait a week in the semifinals, right? What if we cut regular season and we just had double elimination at Worlds and we just had a longer Worlds format? That would be great because clearly regular season doesn't mean jack shit. <laughs> We've been in asking NA for or that. EU. We've been it doesn't matter to LPL so either. Yeah. Dude, it's, did it's, it matter to LPL? No, it didn't. <laughs> it's crazy to me that like two, three weeks ago we're talking about like, oh yeah, TSM. I mean, we're, you know... They won six games throughout the entire regular season. We're expecting them to like make it far. They won five games. They almost won twice as are the same amount of games they won in like eight weeks, yeah. nine weeks, yeah, and yeah, they did it did. two. Yeah, like, come it. on, man, it's yeah, crazy. Pretty, pretty sure TL like, and EG have played. They played more games in playoffs than they did regular season. I'm pretty yeah. sure. I I wouldn't be surprised without. I think it's like 20 they played and then 18 in regular season, right? Uh, yeah, make. Play, make worlds longer. Double Elim, longer worlds, more games there, more matchups. I don't want to see like a civil war in quarterfinals between two of our favorites. Yeah. Right. That happens almost every year. Two really high tier play teams play against each other in quarters and knock each other out, and you got three O's all the way <laughs> to the finals. Yeah. So. I mean, yeah. it's the same same story, different year. We're always asking for double elims. Honestly, I look back at this, and I'm kind of glad EG made it because if they didn't, man, spring split really doesn't matter, right? Like, no, God yeah. dang. I mean, they were so good. They went to MSI. They got better. And then for them, if they didn't make Worlds, like, what a disappointment. Like, honestly, like, Worlds is the thing that everybody plays for, right? Like, nobody really cares. And, again, I said this before, regular season doesn't seem to matter. Spring split no, doesn't seem doesn't. to matter. And so going back to the same story that we sing you know all the time like i think something has to happen in our regular season in the spring split to kind of make things count because it just doesn't see it seems like all the action we've been wanting and all the drama and the thing that's made me fall in love with our lcs has been the playoffs um and so i'm not saying yeah like i'm not saying all playoffs or whatever but maybe some best of series or a way to spice things up it just seems like the best of ones in the regular season doesn't even really mean anything I, I just think regular season period doesn't matter. Summer split doesn't matter either, except for summer playoffs. Like it's yeah. we we coming into this tournament, how bad did C9 look? We were pegging them to be yeah. like fifth place or something like that, and it, not for bad reason. They were just looking terrible, looking dysfunctional. So why are we wasting all this time watching the regular season if it amounts to basically nothing? 
Like LPL playoffs, LG had to play seven best of fives, and they didn't even make worlds. That drama was amazing. What? It's so yeah. hilarious, right? <laughs> Mad Lions lost every single best of five all year, and they are going to worlds. <laughs> that is yeah, the worst. That is, that is so the absolute what? worst, and that should never ever happen. Regardless of them getting an extra spot, there should never be a system like that where yeah, you haven't no. won a single best of five, not even just in summer, not even in spring, and somehow you're the one qualifying. Like that is BS. Give it to Vietnam, and man. I don't know. Yeah. I'd just rather have three major tournaments a year and just three, like, big, long playoff brackets that get there. Maybe there's double elimination. Hell, have triple elimination. I don't know. Round Robin into double elim. Something like yeah. that, right? Yeah. That would be and sick. I would love Spread round it robin out. Maybe go elim. on a tour if you really need to, but just do yeah. that. We we can't keep doing the same thing, right? We can't just keep yeah. coming. Like, EG got first place in regular season, and they mm -hmm. looked pretty good going into it. Yep. And they, they almost didn't make it. They were one game yep. away from getting kicked out it by really TSM. The, <laughs> the seventh place team almost kicked out the number one team, and they would have just not made Worlds. Yeah, I mean, re just, regular yeah. season also just doesn't matter when eight out of ten teams make it. Like, exactly. obviously, like, obviously, yeah, like, TSM did really well. And th to be fair, this is going to be an outlier, most likely. Yes, of course. Right? But, like, it's it's really hard to get excited when, like, we see, we see stuff like this where, yeah, I mean... Yeah. Eight teams out of ten make it, and it's just, it, to, it feels yeah. kind of pointless. To defend regular season for just a second, uh, Cloud9 would have never happened, because honestly, okay, I'm going to steal this from Jet. So Jet, Jet said this in his JLXP, Cloud9 got better in two months than TL did the entire year. <laughs> true. No, that's, that's very oh. true. If there's no regular season, there's no time for some of these teams to gel and this magic to happen. It's just boring for the viewers, right? Well, it it's just, just all it just of this doesn't need to be this long. Like, yeah, yeah, maybe it doesn't need to be this long, or maybe there can be some sort of other format to make it more interesting. But like, the, the, I get the the time length and the behind the scenes stuff is necessary for the players off screen and off camera. But there's got to be a way to make it more interesting for viewers, right? Like. It just doesn't matter. Like your score at the end of the year doesn't matter when you have top eight and when your eighth or seventh seed almost makes it to world by beating your first seed. It's just like yep. it doesn't matter. So I get that. Yeah, time players do need time to improve in gel though, right? Because Cloud Nine two months look like the best team in the entire region with a bunch of lane swaps, with a bunch of half a retired mid laner and auto fill support. Autofill support, <laughs> roll swaps, top laner. Your ADC doesn't speak English. Blabber's a crabber. Like, they did it, right? And then, you know, you can have TL or EG, who EG slumped their way through regular season and then won playoffs. We're the best in playoffs, or we're the best in regular season and barely made it through playoffs. It's just... Holy yeah. crap, man. So. I think I think this is something that, again, we could go on forever because it really is a big gripe that we've continued to have. And I'm sure this is a big community sentiment. Like, it's not a secret. Like, we're tired of this. So hopefully uh, there will be a change at some point. Maybe if we keep asking for it, it'll finally happen. But um, I think that's going to wrap things up for us. I do want to say that I really enjoyed Mitchell and Kevin's uh episode there on the patch notes 12.17 oh. i also want to ask that if anybody you know if you guys have suggestions or ideas we'd like to do more kind of these mini episodes or side episodes so let us know in the comments or whatever uh if there's any kind of segment that you'd like to see i think uh one of the things we've been bouncing around is maybe kind of going through some of the top reddit uh, discussion threads and kind of just going over those um i even think that we could go over just general solo queue like power like stuff like stuff that's op right now or talk about the game in general i think there's just so much about it that we can't all cram into one episode because this is our lcs focus one maybe we can have a little offshoot so i i leave a comment let us know what you know you guys think um also kevin i want to say that you are going to be there uh this weekend yep. i think you should make a sign shouting all of us out man so that they'll put all you podcast. all in podcast man and then we'll see it and then we'll uh you know go crazy we'll be in the discord probably and go how do you yeah. get the sign at these <laughs> i don't know I actually don't know i'll figure it know. out i'm sure yeah they like maybe they provided or something but yeah. also uh, quick reminder um world's tickets that's September right. 8th. Yeah. 2 days. I'm, yeah. I'm going I'm to ready. semis. League dad are you going to semis? I'm going to I'm yeah, I'm going to take try to take my son with me. Uh, so I'm like, I'm trying to get him in it now. He's, he's nine. So <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to be going with some friends. I know I'll, 
you'll be there. I've Heck got some yeah. guys from Lotus going, and I'm going with my school. So oh, that's gonna be great, man. It'll it's gonna be. be a, I'm just hoping I can get tickets, man. That's that's all I'm hoping Same. for. Yeah, so. September 29th are finals tickets for San Francisco, okay. Kevin. Anybody else who wants to come to San Francisco, Kevin? September 29th is when finals tickets in San Francisco are. Go on sale. I, dude, if I don't get right. those, I'm gonna. Uh, it's gonna be so hard. <laughs> Sneak in. <man. laughs> it's gonna be really hard. Sneak in. I'm literally. I'm gonna stay up all night. I'm just gonna be on my computer, ready to go. Just waiting, Ugh. refreshing. <laughs> it's going to be exciting. This is a good time of year. I'm excited for it. But uh, uh, that's it. That's going to wrap it up for us. Thank you again to my awesome co-hosts and friends, Kevin, Mitchell, and Alistair, for always sharing their wise thoughts. Uh, but until next time, enjoy your climb on the Rift. Try not to be too toxic. And we'll see you all on the next episode. Peace.